So now we're filming kind of the underwater shots to get you the cool close-ups of some of these fish. I'm actually super impressed the number of live bears and cichlids that live together. I've done that for a long time, but I've never seen it. I thought they'd prey on them way harder, but they breed so fast that it's not, it's just unbelievable the density of fish there's going on in these pools. 300 gallons, the amount of fish is crazy to me. And just every single one of them is like that. If we go over here, it's the amount of fish. So hopefully we'll be cutting down to, like look at, they're looking at the camera right here. We'll cut down to some of this water shot for you. And you, hopefully you'll be as impressed as I am. I absolutely, I like African cichlids. I love live bears. I love the nature approach to this. The most impressive part to me is that there's no water changes done, only top off. Only water's getting topped off, which I think is such an important way to show, because not, like no one else does this that I know of. Yeah, usually I take the plastic off the end and put a, a screen door, yep. <laughs> as you can tell that one's falling apart, uh, and uh, a fan. It's like a our, box fan? Yeah, our big, our big fans got killed. I've yeah. got two big uh, roller fans. I usually cool these. This system runs off that sump, okay. so uh, I don't worry too much about once I have it open. Well, that's uh, kind of nice. You can almost use this as a heater for that because you're circling the water through. You yeah. can keep one hotter, one cooler. That's kind of yeah. nice. Uh, we typically don't have to heat. If we get any sun at all, we don't have to heat. Okay. But South Texas, you end up with these uh, cut-off lows. Yeah, there's a snake right there. Yeah, that's a Texas uh, ribbon snake. They okay. reproduce in there as a youngster. They I had. Go in the water though, right? Uh, they yeah, they hunt in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they do hunt the water. Yeah, uh, the, the, they're pretty good little fishers. Uh, I had used to have one. There he's going across the yeah. walkway. Uh, we used to have one uh, in Greenhouse 2, uh, which is where we met, raised a lot of live bears. And anytime there was an injured fish or something, I'd dangle it and right. he'd come and eat that out of my fingers. That's awesome. Okay. And those so, ones, not much threat to humans, correct? That, that uh, they're, they're, uh, my, our nephew is a uh, uh, professor at Florida State University. He studies uh -huh. snake venoms okay. and the evolution of snake venoms. And he says that they're finding almost every snake has venom. It's just to some that, capacity, it, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. Let's start sweating. Yep, you we will. In, I was just in Florida last week, and so it was hot in the in the fish rooms there. Too, yeah. So. These. <laughs> yeah. We raise. Uh, oh, there's one of our big plecos. Wow. Uh, and you breed those guys then? Uh, not deliberately. Uh, okay. Uh, and they were. One of the few things that benefited from Harvey, all the rainwater, 14 inches of rainwater coming in, and they spawned like mad. So we've got, oh. we have a whole bunch of plecos about this big right now from those spawns. So I, what I've thought about doing, since I know that that triggers it, is uh, setting up one of those big vats, running rainwater off, do rainwater collection, yep. and uh, spawn them that way. This, there. I should have brought some pellets in. Let me go get a handful sure. of pellets and then they'll okay. come up yeah, to eat. No joke, it's probably 120 in here. Yeah. It's I can hot. feel it just by the door. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would not be shocked if the cameras start shutting down. Yeah. Like, I don't want to overheat in there. So. But it makes for great film. Yep. It's so hot that you, you're going to see the beads of sweat. They're already forming. Surprisingly enough, they recognize me and the dogs. I believe it. And uh, I don't. Uh, they may not come up to to eat for y'all. This is uh, Labiatrophus fulvarii, okay. uh, blue marmalade. Uh, it's uh, some people call them marmalade cats. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We. Uh, it's a dominant gene. The the the, the spotting is the dominant. So gene. someone already. I said I was coming to a fish farm and they wanted to know what you feed, and I already knew your secret of. The big floating pellets, right? So you yeah. want to explain that a little bit? Okay, this is Aquamax 500. It's made by Perina. Yep. We buy it in 50-pound bags. Commercial feed. Right. Yep. It's it's basically this is a 40 percent, a 42 percent protein. Yes. Uh, and it's used for catfish production and trout production. Uh huh. Uh, we also feed uh, three crumbles, which I'll show you later. Okay. Uh, uh, 100, 200, and 300, and that refers to 
uh, their size. Like and, a grind or something, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, the filter that they go through. Oh, and okay. it's 50% protein, sinks wow. slowly. Uh, the fish like this, some of the feral fish might come up. Uh, wow. uh, fish like this, it's heavy in oil. There you see one of the breeder males sticking his nose out down there and a couple females. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, we have 36 breeders in there. That's probably okay. three males and the rest of them females. And that was set up in January. And so for this tub, and so for viewers might not know that they're a mouth brooder, do you let them just spawn and spit in there or do you come in and pull each time? We, uh, we yeah. the, the labor involved in yep. stripping. The interesting thing is we get new breeding stock in and uh, well, let me tell you what how we harvest this. Yeah. Every three to four months we come in here, uh, those, we call those fry cages. Yep. And, and uh, there are two of these uh, what we call cichlid hotels in each one yep. of those and then five of them in here and then a, a little bit bigger uh, uh -huh. uh, drain pipe uh, and we come in pull everything out the cages out harvest anything that's in the cages uh, then net out all the adults put mm -hmm. them in five gallon buckets take them over to greenhouse one where okay. we, uh, and where we sort yep. count the breeders sort out the uh, the little fish and we put one to two inch fish in uh, a 55 gallon vat, two to three in another 55 gallon vat, three to four. Uh, usually you don't have very many three to fours. Mm -hmm. uh, the cycle is three to four months depending upon temperature. Okay, so uh, maybe you harvest three or four times a year then? Yeah. Okay. And uh, usually at about two months I come and dump these cages out. I pull the hotels out, dump the fish out. So I know how these work. Explain how these like cages and hotels work and why they're in there. Okay, uh, I'll show you one. You got a better example down the way? Well, I have one that's out. Okay. Or will be out. There's a sidebar here. I want people to see how much sweat is just on my arm so far. Oops. Oh my gosh. Like it's really <laughs> hot in here. Oh, you put a, like a, you stilt them up so that way they don't sit across Yeah, the, the this hasn't worked. We're going to longer ones now, okay. but it, so it doesn't sit on the bottom. Right, yeah. And the adult fish kind of like that because they can ha hide under there. That's oh, what that's those guys are doing. And we put a couple of the hotels in there, there's some of those. Yeah. And then the fry, the females, I've watched them, when they're ready to spit, they sidle up alongside of this. Oh, that's Let smart. the fry go and the fry dart for cover. Yeah, he likes dogs. Eat, he, <laughs> yeah, he likes the it's fish. To protect the fry. The fry go in. Adults can't get them. Then right. they can raise up. Yeah. So at, at about two months, I come and dump these out because the first fry are getting big enough to maybe. Oh, then they fry on the smaller ones. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those are mo mollies and the the cichlids are all hiding for some reason. There's a little cichlid. So here's the controversial question on mm. the internet. Oh, there's one right there. Um, do you think the mulm that's on the bottom beneficial or detrimental? To beneficial. You? That's I feel the same way. People are so yeah. worried about getting now the we out. you don't see much in the gutters. Okay. Or in our sumps. And I thought our four foot deep sumps would would you know I'd have to uh -huh. clean them out every once in a while. No, uh, all the, breaks down all enough? the feral fish keep it stirred up and it breaks okay. down. Uh, and just give you an idea on the system, like say this one's running off the sump in greenhouse too. Uh -huh. There we have pumps that pump the water in these two inch lines. Yeah, there's quite a bit of pumps. There's a lot of water flow going. Yeah, yeah, we... Uh, Pretty high in electricity. Uh, see the air, air lines? You don't see any air. Uh -huh. We're deactivating those. It's okay, not, it's not, not worth running the bl blowers. It's better off having two valves in each uh, vat. And yeah, that, you'd rather have the yeah. more water And then, over. you know, if we lose power, the generator comes on, and uh, the uh, it's easier to run the water pumps than it is uh, to run the yep. air blowers. Especially take a lot of power. We just uh -oh. set. We just. My phone is shut off. Too hot. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> set it Even fish right here. Okay, see, it's quite a bit cooler in here because of the shade cloth. Oh, it's way cooler in here. That shade makes cloth, a big difference. I can't believe. Makes a huge the tree difference. Tree structure, and I can see yeah. the snake on it. Oh yeah, that's a young diamondback water snake. I've only ever seen the pictures. This is like my mecca because I I'm in love with the fact that 
you don't change water, you only replace evaporation and like. No, I thought I, I thought our uh, that our mineral levels would go sky high. Uh -huh. They don't. And it's the same as our well water, but if you look on the vats where water flows out, yep. especially on the 55s, I'll try to show you some. I think this is what the, the, <laughs> the calcium carbonate calcium oh, is it? Okay. Uh, precipitates out. And precipitates out? Yeah, it makes huh. uh, it's like, in fact, you, if you drip our well water, you'll develop you'll stalactites and stalagmites. And okay. so the excess mineral just ends up precipitating out forming uh, sheets. I thought maybe in my own mind without being able to be here I was like maybe you combat it with all the plants stripping the excess minerals that was my thought was that that maybe? could be that they're doing that they're yeah. cer they certainly suck ammonia out this yeah. is black mangrove by the way I knew you were in so once I knew that I was like you can run mangroves in freshwater I've seen it done at a massive scale not just a one of this in my opinion it's a massive scale of like yeah. repeatable yeah this uh, these bloomed for the first time last year and we had babies wow uh and uh it's a little bit annoying do you, do you sell any of them on the website i uh, haven't yeah i thought we could take cuttings of this uh -huh. and sell cuttings they won't root huh yeah you gotta uh, wait for the seed which, pods i guess oh now black mangroves unlike uh red mangroves don't grow crop roots they grow these aerial roots for oxygen okay and you can see those coming up. Huh. But I thought I'd be able to take cuttings. I have never gotten one to root. Maybe if you were like good at grafting, you could graft it onto something else, I, but it's yeah. so much work. But but the you know the propagules work, the you know, we got our yeah. first generation of uh, So while we're babies. here, because I already spotted it, this is another thing I love. The walkway. <laughs> like yeah. we had wooden walkways and uh -huh. we're not quite finished. We were almost finished when Harvey hit and I haven't gotten okay. back to it. Uh, we don't have any wooden ones, but there are some at the ends. There are some center blocks missing and stuff. But I decided to get rid of the wooden walkways because we could find no way that they would last very long. Yeah, what, every what, eight, ten years you had to replace them or something? Uh, try three or four. Oh, wow, yeah. And a lot of labor and... Especially uh, they can't be treated because they're already part of the sump. You can't use any of the chemicals. Yeah. yeah. So the... Yeah, you can't put you can't put treated wood in. Right. Uh, we tried marine paint, that didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing is our ancestors loved the wooden walkways and would lay their eggs. They go makes, up underneath them and makes lay. Some sense if it rots, they might be able to get the fiber. Well, material. what we're doing, we we tested. We're taking the old walkways and we're making uh, hotels for them, strapping the wood to a, uh, a brick. Oh. And putting those in them, and they re, they spawn a lot better. They don't like PVC or anything like that. They spawn a lot better. And I wonder if they can feel the fibrous material and know that know. Oh, one, it's a food, let, food source, and yeah. B, eggs will adhere better. Let me show you this plant. This is Deffenbachia, which you can touch it and it won't bother you, but if you get sap on you, it's worse than poison ivy. Okay. And this, my mother had one that's about this big mm -hmm. that her cats kept clawing okay. down and i got it i set it on the edge of the of the maybe in that pot gutter and uh, not that one but okay. one like that and then it grew into this monster i've got those are potted up over there we're going to donate them to the schrader volunteer fire department for nice. their fundraiser and stuff they're good in, they're good house plants but uh, they're a pain did you start the fish farm or was that okay you got the fish when you were young so no one else is doing fish this is all you then yes okay i had uh up in our north pasture i had actually the uh, part of the farm that my sister bought uh i had 20 ponds dirt ponds that i oh, raised wow. fish uh then we moved uh to how, how long have you been a fish farmer and selling Okay, I roughly when I was 13, I started selling uh, fancy guppies to shops in Houston. My grandparents okay. would take me to, to Houston. I'd sell. Uh, and were those in the ponds? Uh, no, they're water troughs and aquarium okay. and aquariums. Good enough to be farming, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And then in college, I switched to killifish, and pretty much put myself uh, through school raising blue galeras. Nice. Well, yeah, that's a popular fish. Yeah. And I, I worked out a means, and in fact, we're going to do it again this summer. I nice. worked out a means of, of uh, uh, 
raising large numbers of them. Nice. And uh, probably contract with somebody like 5D or something to yeah, sell I was, I, That's the farm we were just at yeah. last week. 5D yeah. slash Nautilus yeah. Merge. So they got a, their facilities is huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, then we moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico in uh, 91. And in 97, I put in a greenhouse there and started raising rainbows. Okay. Then we bought this uh, from my, my mother, and, and uh, uh, it's been in the family since 1870. Uh, brought it from my mother in uh, uh, 2000. It took us a couple years to move the hatchery. We built this greenhouse. Okay. Hurricane Claudette destroyed it in 2003. And we, we learned that's why we took the plastic yeah. off because it, it crushed. Uh, in fact, that's that's why we quit raising uh, rainbows. We lost almost all our breeding stock. Mm -hmm. uh, and the grow time so long to get the breeders back. Yeah, and so we uh, we got in some fish from uh, seagrass and 5D, some cichlids, and started raising cichlids. And nice. uh, so let's walk down okay. uh, here to the sump. Yep. And those fish won't care. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's a. <laughs> this is where we throw off-color fish and stuff in in this vat, and then I just uh, have a couple customers that buy them. They're fairly decent-looking fish. There's a an OB peacock oh, down yeah. there, blue OB peacock. OBs are one of my favorite of the Africans. I'm kind of like if I'm going to go hybridize, OBs is where it's at. They. Uh, I like a lot of yellow and blue. Are we got a box of OB peacocks in from from uh, Seagrist, I think it was, uh -huh. in 2003 or four, and then we I selected the best looking males, kept all the females, sold off all the other males as they grew up, and from them we've developed uh, a really nice blue OB, yep. sky blue OB, gold OB, orange OB, orange with uh, non OB and blue non OB. And nice. the, those are our bread and butter, the aquarium maintenance companies. Well, yeah, so when snap I those up. We raise, see all the Africans, but I'm, I'm only seeing all the live bears. I mean, not yeah. only, but. Yeah, our live bears took a big hit in, in Harvey. There's some young, well, they decided to hide. When I walk through here alone, everybody's up at the top hitting. Sure. Well, they know you're the, the one that brings the food. These are. Well, uh, when we clean the 55s, what we do, we siphon them down yeah. through a net. First, we net the fish out that we can. Then we siphon it down through a net. Then we use a, uh, that's a coarse. We use a, uh, there's a fine over there, a 10-inch brine shrimp net and just net out any of the mom on the bottom. That stuff's loaded with paramecium. If I uh -huh. need to feed anything uh, paramecium, uh, I come in, net out a bunch of gunk off the bottom, uh, fill up the bucket, come back in the next morning and there's just kind of a milky cloud. Water, right? And I yeah. just pour that off. That and, makes, uh, see that, that right there is a serious breeder tip. That means everyone pretty much owns paramecium culture, they just yeah. don't know it yet. Yeah, and yeah, these are multinucleatum, which is the largest of the paramecium. Okay. And you can act, but it looks like milk. Yeah, in, yeah. In swarms of milk. and. I just didn't get around. We were working these vats yesterday. I didn't get around uh -huh. to hauling this out. We throw this on our worm beds and... Infinite nutrients. Yeah. yeah. Which kind of recycles it because I'm guessing you feed the worms back to fish. Uh, yeah, we haven't... Uh, we're building up populations again. During, during Harvey, they want the worms went on walkabout. <laughs> yeah, I believe <laughs> They it. just spread all over the place. Uh, this is Pipe Oretum, by the way. Uh, they get some of the leaves you see bigger leaves but those are the ones that it's sell amazing. for cooking and what they people take that's a flower uh wrap wrap that around fish uh -huh. and we we got some redfish from uh, from uh, the coast from a uh, fish house and uh fixed it and it's kind of fishy tasting sure so my wife came out the next day got some leaves wrapped it and it took all that away left a nice flavor wow. uh, yeah. 
Sometimes called root beer plant. From the it, yeah, it's kind of got that. I don't, don't want to call it a spearmint, but like that yeah. smell of root beer. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what that smell is called, but it's got that smell. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it's got that bark yeah. smell too. Yeah, yeah. see, our the aretum's out of control. We normally don't let it get this big. How often do you have to cut it back? Uh, about every six months. Oh wow! And this has been a year and a half, and you can see we don't have these vats even running because the the roots have grown through, clogged everything up. And makes yeah. it impossible to catch anything out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we I was trimming some this morning and didn't get this taken yeah. out. So just watch where you step. Did you find when you originally added all the cinder blocks, did it add like any pH or anything to the water? No. Our, our pH ranges from uh, during the summer, first thing in the morning, it's about 8.2. Okay. In the afternoon, it's about 8.5. Okay. And because of photosynthesis is yeah. running it up, and at night, uh, uh, respiration is, is dropping it. Yeah. Uh, our well water comes up, surprisingly enough, at 7. But as huh. soon as you aerate it, it jumps up to 8.5. So it's got a lot of CO2 or something holding yeah. it down. Yeah. See, I don't have this done. Okay, if you be careful getting to the end of the walkway, but you'll get to see some nice fish. <laughs> hey, film on the other way, Jimmy. Huh? Film over here. Like you see all the fish down in the pond? Yeah. Or in the... Wow. Wow, look at Oh, there, yeah, that's one of the... He has to be wow, careful. Like Somebody a lot of like, like uh, what ahis, like with the iceberg line and everything. Yeah, there's uh, just a good mixture of stuff. So that's just probably lives there, and you guys, do you ever harvest it? Or? Yeah, we. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can drape a net in there, throw some food in, and, and just pull it up. Uh, we'll, we'll probably be doing wow. it. This is the best pond ever. I don't want, you know, I've got koi and stuff. Now I just want African cichlid ponds. <laughs> yeah, this is four feet deep. Uh, we have the, the pumps we use today are these uh, uh, above ground pumps. I yeah. go, uh, we used to use submersible and then uh, you can see the readums gotten out of control here. Uh -huh. I got to cut all that back. Uh, the problem with these is that sometimes if you lose power for uh, and it takes a while for the generator to gen up sometimes they don't re like an air pocket in them or something yeah and so we are going to go back to submersible with gfis the reason i went away from them is uh after hurricane Har uh claudette two employees and i were uh, trying to net fish out of the uh -huh. of the uh, sump and i was in the water they oh there's a big uh uh, green Terror. We got. Yeah, green, I was seeing yeah, that. I was like, yeah. maybe my mind's playing tricks me. I was. Well, like, we bought uh, Fish Gallery has three shops and they sell a lot of Green Terrors. They wanted us to raise some for them, so I uh, got a, a box of little ones, grew them up, and during Harvey they all swam out. Yeah. Because we got 14 inches of rain and and a lot of leaf debris and overflows mm -hmm. and stuff, and so uh, one of these days I'm going to. Trap them in order to, uh, to spawn them. Uh, there's big phosochromus in yeah, there. Yeah, I was, was going to say. Yeah, there, there that it guy is. Was yeah. Big. Yeah. Victorians there, looks like maybe. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing, you get very few hybrids. Huh. There's a convict. Yeah. Uh, we kept getting this little fish when, when about an inch long was vivid orange. <laughs> and my theory we're looking at it was is a, a spring or I, uh red zebra cross so, so spring rye is what uh that's the uh, rusty cichlid right? yeah yeah okay yeah and that's a weird mix yeah and i thought okay that's got to be it just looking at it it reminded me of both both species the problem is when it got to two inches it started turning brown by the time it's three inches it was gray brown oh here's my wife uh and but we kept getting those and, when it, and whenever we did any trapping. Yeah. And uh, so I set up uh, a spawn of uh, spring rye and red zebras. And that offspring looks exactly like a red okay. zebra. You cannot tell the difference. Huh. Uh, I would never want to mix those hybrids with right. them because you wouldn't be able to sort them out. So I said, okay, that's not it. Then accidentally I figured out what it was. I had a bat. 
uh, that I w had some labiotrophous females I was just growing up uh, uh, to use, and I had some uh, spring rye males. I needed some place just to dump them. I dumped them in there. When I went to harvest the females, a whole bunch of little orange uh, fish. The problem is they don't stay that way. You know, it's not the volume of water that stunts the fish, it's the quality yeah. of the water. I always quote, there was like a study I watched one time where they had goldfish that were always touching each other, but it was a flow-through system. They ever saw the same water twice? Yeah. Uh, Auburn University had a 10-gallon aquarium video with uh, 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 carp that okay. were long enough that noses and tails were touching yeah. six of them in there and it was a flow through yep. and the fish had to slide past each other to uh -huh. eat. Uh, so, yeah, the video was very similar just to prove that, you know, it's water quality. water quality. Yeah. 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 We have more plants than we need for water quality in here. We have a red mangrove over there. When uh, you test water quality in here, is it... Um, Zero ammonia. Zero ammonia. Nitrate as well? Yeah. yeah I uh, the, these plants, I think, are using ammonia directly. Yeah, that would make sense. And you can see a little bit of yellowing in the leaves. They're not that getting means they want more. Yeah, they're not getting enough. He's got to feed a few more times a day. Yeah. <laughs> now, we feed 250 pounds of food a week. A week? Yeah. Wow. We overfeed, and that's why there's some mom yeah, in the bottom of the net. Every live bear competition <laughs> you enter, because you've got the biggest fish around. Yeah. Uh, the duckweed we feed to our chickens, but yeah. they can't eat enough of it. This is a uh, scud vat. Okay. We. we sell the hell out of scuds. Uh, I bought some scuds off you even, yeah. Uh, we ship scuds out every week and I, I really haven't figured out what... I think your only competition is like Catalina Aquarium. They sell for like a billion dollars to like all the labs and schools. So that's probably why you're just dominating that scene. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah uh, when I go to do a thousand, what I do, I pull the hornwort out. They eat hornwort, by the way. Huh. Uh, and then I stir up the bottom really good, take a coarse 10-inch uh, net, run it through the water column, and I do this and look at it, oh, that's 200, <laughs> yeah, which is usually around three or yeah. 400. Uh, I can't believe that your ecosystem is so much of an ecosystem that there's literally fog and like cloud cover inside oh, the green. Yeah, you, you should see that in the morning on a it's cool crazy. day. Yeah. These are some of our moena vats that we harvest from. Okay. Mm. Do, does the uh, moena get out from this? Because you're. Yeah, they'll go through. And, it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Food. Well, in fact, we got these from Kate, Dr. Caitlin Gabor at Texas State University uh -huh. uh, years and years ago. Probably. When did we get those from Caitlin? I looked it up the other day. The scuds. Probably 2005 or something like that. And I tossed them in a vat and then pretty soon they were everywhere. Uh, Do you ever get green water bloom inside the greenhouses? Oh, I can if I if I turn that vat off, it'd uh -huh. be green tomorrow. Yeah, but as a whole system, it'll never turn. No. Yeah, okay. Probably not enough nutrients left in it. No, it's, uh, you know, you get a little bit of you know, stirred up stuff, but uh -huh. uh, other than that, the water's clear if you... Get a jar here. So I know people will be amazed, but I'm guessing you run no mechanical filtration through the system, right? There's yeah. no filtration. I'm always trying to preach to people like, this is yeah. nature. No one's pulling this out of nature. That's water yeah. out of the system. And uh, but if we turned off the the pumps, so that, uh, yeah, it would probably just settle me crystal clear. Yeah, it, it would. Uh, well, if we turned off the pumps within 48 hours, it'd be all green. green. Yeah. Uh, That's nice, though, that you can make green water almost on command. Yeah. Turn one out, yeah. like, oh, I needed some green water. Uh, this is uh, Sky Blue OB. You can see one of our breeder, two breeder males in there, right. and, and it, surprisingly, the males hang out together. You can see why I don't like 
the black mangrove. Right. The leaves are perfect size to clog up yep. stuff. This is one of the babies from last spring of the okay. black mangrove. Yeah, you can really see the fry systems in action right here. That, well, those are actually guppies. Yeah. And uh, they do surprisingly well. These are some uh, dragon bloods. You can see oh, nice. big male there. So the guppies and the, like, the Africans will cohabitate for the most part in these systems? Yeah. Uh, you would think they would just decimate them all. No, the guppies reproduce. Wow. You can see all, all of them. You know, they know where to go hide, and I guess the fish get habituated. That makes sense. They just dart in there, and after yeah. a while, they're tired of chasing them. Yeah. This, uh, w this one's leaking, and I found I can take a, a bag and put it up against it. The water pressure stops ah. the leak. Because Susie doesn't like the walkways to be wet. Yep. This is uh, wow. blue OBs. You can see there's a blue. So one of my breeder males is... Uh, uh -huh. th this one's way past time to harvest it will be doing that tomorrow uh, you can see there's some pretty good sized fish but those blues so at least one of my breeder males and at least one female is heterozygous for oh, OB wow. how often do you harvest and update the website so when people are looking like oh it's every you know is it every month every couple months or is it every week what's that how often do you like update so if you harvest these, I'm guessing they eventually get yeah, put in the stock online. Right, right now we're not listing much online just because okay. we're still trying to recover. Yep, build uh, up. We, you know, for example, I can't read the date on that one. This vat was set up uh, last year. Yeah, it looks like down there, is, if that tag is correct, 425-2018. Yeah. So a year ago, yep. So we're, we're just way behind. But now that the house is... I still have some plumbing to do on the house, sure. uh, but we're able to spend more time on the fish. Basically, all we could do that, that first uh, year was just kind of keep things going a little bit. Yeah. And our live bears took a big hit, and I think it's most of the leaf debris that blew in, and, and we got inches and inches of stuff out okay. of each bat. Uh, black willow. Uh, uh, Acacia farnesiana, which is uh, wee satch, and mesquite. And one or more of those uh, has some compound that prevented reproduction. Wow. And, and our uh, live bears, especially mollies, hmm. uh, did not bother cichlids, did not bother. We raised one barb, it didn't bother the barb, but it did. Uh, hit all the live bears, some worse than others. Where we would normally get, you know, out of 40 females, get five or 600 uh, fish in three months, we were getting 10. Wow. And so on top of that, water, lost a lot of the breeders. Did the water change your way out of that, or just removing the leaves got you uh, Removing the leaves seems to have done most of it. Although, to tell you, you know, we still have some bats with leaves in them. Sure. <laughs> this is another, Bat of uh, dragon bloods, which is uh, kind of an annoying fish because a large percentage of them don't get the color you want. Right, they're more of a uh, yellow than a Yeah, color. although we did a, uh, we raise a lot of uh, in greenhouse too. We raise a whole lot of uh, cherry shrimp. Yeah, and a few years ago I did. Uh, a feeding test. I took Red Empress, which also has a bad habit of yeah. not all the males coloring up nicely. And I split the, uh, I had about 75 males and two vats side by side. I fed cherry shrimp for about three weeks every other day or so yeah. uh, to one vat without telling anybody who it was, then had Susie and a couple of employees come in, net the fish out, and look at the difference. Huge difference. And Six months later, the, the ones that were colored up were still colored up. Nice. Uh, fish don't produce their own uh, red and right. uh, pigments. So. Well, there's so much krill in the feeds, but yeah. krill's so expensive yeah. to feed on a scale this level, it doesn't make sense. Cherry shrimp are kind of expensive to feed too, but what we do yeah. is uh, all of our culls, uh, if they don't have a good red color, you have to c continuously cull them 
or they you know, lose the red. I wonder if like the Malawi shrimp, which is like, it's not super red, but it's crazy hardy and reproduces really fast. I wonder if that'd be a good... Cherry shrimp, I mean, yeah. reproduce like mad. <laughs> they do, for yeah. sure. There, that's a uh, Libitochromus. Uh, yeah, Cerulius, yeah. You can see, you know, they're... Their youngsters are colorful, so you can uh -huh. actually see them. See all the guppies, but you also see all yeah. the raccoon came in and messed up those two cages for me. Uh, I'm going to trap him. I just trapped one a couple weeks ago. I'm going to trap yeah, the next one. How little algae there is, like on the liners and that kind of stuff. Uh, we put most of these 300s, we put a couple uh, plecos in. Okay. I'd rather use Ancestrus, and if we can get our reproduction back up. Yep. Uh, I would, uh, and yeah, I, I guess it's all the fish action. I'm not sure, yeah, I just, or uh, that. Yeah, I guess even the the sessile algaes are inhibited by the plant sucking. And how out many there. gallons is the overall system here? But the three greenhouses, seventy-five thousand. What's the water temp running here? Uh, right now, it's probably around 73 or 4. And what's the coldest you'll let it get before you got to uh, turn heat on? Uh, I try to keep it above 65. Okay. So I, I've got a video that's going to come out where I'm trying to educate people of like, we don't need aquarium heaters. They're a good safety net, but most of our homes are always 75 it's Central or air, yeah, you don't need. Yeah. And in fact, on things like guppies and stuff, they live a lot longer at those That's what I mean, but the internet thinks I'm insane, so I have to tread this path slowly so I'm not just this heretic ruining the industry. <laughs> but I'm like, every fish yeah. farm runs much cooler temperatures. We're buying from them, you know. Yeah. Uh, evolution happens very quickly. I'll give you some examples in a minute. We're, that is a... Um, uh, a six foot table that we can get, oh, yeah, like get for 40 table. bucks yeah. yeah and see that wooden walkway that one's uh -huh. cracked in the middle Ooh. and this one I had these two pumps on a wooden walkway and I went to step and went through one of the boards and, and everything was sagging so Carl and I came in here and uh, lifted the pumps up got one edge on and finally got this thing That'll uh, be the true test of that lifetime table right there. Yeah. That thing holds up long term. Yeah, so far it's working good. In fact, I'm getting ready. I've got another one I'm going to put under that pump. Nice. And I'm going to replace. Wood just doesn't yeah. survive. Yeah, so what happens, you know, you see the water running in. Mm -hmm. We have, for little fish, we have these strainers. Okay. Uh, oh, that one's in there tight. Uh, that stop them from going through. Some fry will go through. This is a nice Alana Cara, uh, uh, Stuart Granti, I forget which color oh. variety. Uh, I think that's uh, Mavinji Blue. Uh, surprisingly, I mean, most of the Alana Caras look a lot alike, but people like them. So. Any color variety is, you know, they want, they want to collect the rainbow. Yeah. Most of our fish go to, we haven't really pushed retail. Yep. Most of our fish go to uh, shops, and especially aquarium maintenance. Uh, fish Gallery has three shops, but those are mainly uh, uh, kind of showrooms. They, they have, I think they have 200 people run wow. trucks going out doing aquarium maintenance. Oh, in 2008, uh, uh, I can't remember his name now, he's from England, was here. He'd just gotten a brand new digital camera. We had wooden walkways and he was walking along here. Foot went through, yep. fell into <laughs> the vat, fried his camera. I'm notorious for always falling no matter where we film. <laughs> yeah, this is a good place and, and we aren't liable. <laughs> We're going to do uh, a blog I'm working on right now. It's because we got our first rattlesnake yesterday yeah. okay. in, in the yard by the kids trampoline of by course. the grand brats trampoline uh and we don't kill anything we right. uh, so uh, but susie won't let me catch them by hand anymore because i was bitten in 2004 yeah. uh so she has a snake stick so i i got the snake stick the dogs pointed out where it was i got the snake stick put it in a barrel and we hauled it off to our east pasture those i don't Poisonous snakes, I don't take to anybody else's property or even right. a public place. Yeah. It, it, but I get them away from the house. Yep. 
Uh, a lot of times we'll just walk around them, but if they're in the yard where the kids are. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. You don't so, want anyone stepping on And it. then later in the day, a big scoloporous olivaceous, which is a. a, 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 a Trying to think of the common name. It's a, a kind of spiny lizard. Okay. A big female who's already gravid. She's already full of eggs uh, this early in the year. Uh, I caught her and we took photos of her. Then I put her up on the tree. And you know, so I'm going to do a blog. You know, uh, the signs that summer has arrived on the farm for our first yeah. rattlesnake. And she'll Ooh. scratch you and yeah. want to get petted. That snake is still there. Yeah. That one's. Uh, Three or four weeks old. Uh, the babies are really cute. Wait, that snake is only three or four weeks old. That's yeah. The size? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They're biting you. Yeah, they're pretty aggressive. Wow. There's a thumbnail right there getting bit by a snake. And uh, uh, the other thing he squirted, he must. Oh, we yeah. Could, scented, yeah. We could sell. Uh, this one's not a very attractive one. We uh, A lot of them are really red. Uh, and we could sell a lot of them, except for I, you know, I don't think people would keep them because they yeah. musk. Are they not strong enough to break the skin? Uh, bleeding oh, a little bit. Oh, barely, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Yeah, the big ones are. I mean, you yeah. get a, you get a uh, three-foot female, and you'll bleed like mad. See, see it flatten its head so it looks like a poisonous snake? Yeah. They get pretty tame. Uh, when we had a bunch of them before Harvey... Uh, the uh, and yeah, another couple of years we'll have a bunch again. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them will get tame enough. You have to step over them. They're on the walkway basking, and you have to step over them. This greenhouse will probably be a little bit warmer because it's got only a, a forty percent shade cloth. Okay. Next year I'm going to spring for a seventy-five percent. See, this one's warmer. Cherry shrimp. Wow, you do make cherry shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, shocked at how many we can sell. Yeah. I bought a half dozen of them from Village Tropical, which is now Fish Gallery in Houston, probably in 2004 or something like that. I think I paid five or six bucks a piece for them, eight bucks a piece. Yeah. Dropped them in a vat without telling Susie I'd spent that much sure. on it. And then all of a sudden they, they just took off. Yeah. We we sell we wholesale them at sixty cents. Uh huh. And uh and Yeah, uh, that's a good wholesale price on this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, five D you're selling that big five D sells them at, at ninety cents. So yeah. and yeah, I think in three hundred lots. This is a. This is one of the few live bearers that was not affected by. Uh, huh. This is uh, Gambusia uh, uh, punctata, the Cuban blue-eyed Gambusia, which is a nice fish. It's not mean, uh, unlike a finis. But all the other, even a finis, was affected by the, uh, whatever caused the reproduction. This is. Annoying. There's a well. We lost the liner dropped down. The sump pumped almost dry about a week and a half ago, and uh, I caught it in time to save all our pumps. Yeah. And, and they they can actually run hot uh, yeah. anyway. Uh, but we got air in the system. I can't get it out. Uh, oh, I, I did drop a thermometer in here this morning. Uh, should have a pair of glasses. Or, and see what the temperature is. 25, so that's 77. Warmer yeah, than I thought it was. Right yeah, that's, we just dump miscellaneous <laughs> in there. Nice. There's cherry stems over here. Yeah, the cherry, you missed it when you pulled this cherry stems out. If you see how many on the side, it's insane. Oh like, when we God. put the GoPro over there, it's going to be amazing. These aren't our breeders. These are ones we selling? sell yeah wow. yeah our breeders are brighter red uh, Susie insists upon doing all the breeder selection on these guys but we stocked them with we put about 25 of them in with each of our live bearers and we'll harvest right. a few hundred when yeah. we harvest the live bearers 
Oh, yeah, we have this many barrels. Like, I don't know if people realize the scale. How many barrels are in this greenhouse right uh, here? There are four, well, fewer than 400 because we took some out for okay. these 110s. But almost 400, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, 455 gallon barrels, which is yeah. actually 455 gallon tanks. For some reason, they don't like live air as much. Huh. See, I think this is. Yeah, this is uh, a Lemia. Oh, yeah, Lemia, yeah. Nice female. Wow. wow. And those are your breed stock, right? Uh, no, that's actually was a wow. sale vet that's uh, 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 Nigra fasciata. Uh, yeah. This is probably the. Yeah, that's the. the okay. And what we do is same, we put a cage in for fry. Uh, this is uh, one of the Haitian lemias. You see a uh, shrimp in with them yeah. too. Nice male there. Wow, is that the humpback lemia? Uh, no, this one isn't. Uh, okay. Uh, this one's from uh, Haiti. Uh, Rit, uh, Rit Forrester? gave me that okay. fish. It's Garnary. This is another one. This was a. This one is a fish or a little ancestress. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a Gambusia for some reason. We may not have any of these in here. Nope. How do you select which libraries you want to raise up? Well, I raise everything. Susie slicks okay. <laughs> what we don't raise. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the, uh, I mean, if I see a fish, I want it. Uh, the, see, hornwort goes crazy in here. We harvest yeah. this, the chickens and horses eat it. Right. Here you go, Maya. You want it? How nope. many fish do you think you have in the... Like in the system right now, how many fish do you think you have? Like, if you just had to take a guess, uh, at least five hundred thousand. Wow. Uh, you know, counting all the feral fish. Yeah. Let's see. I can't believe that. I mean, every scoop is coming out with a decent amount. Yeah. Well, nothing like we usually get. That's another. That's Perugii. Another Lemia. So good. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's the fish that uh, TFH and I got crosswise on. You know, I used to do the library column, and that's I, right. I I knew you from the library column. And yeah. I didn't mention that yet. And uh, yeah, I did that three and a half years, and the the problem is, I did an article. Uh, we'd gotten Perugii and raised them by the thousands, mm -hmm. and I got some Lemia vitata and quarantine them for a few months, put them on the system, and all of a sudden our Lemia's uh, Perugia just started dying. Huh. Uh, a fish would look okay, 10 minutes later is dead at the top. Wow. Uh, no, no, you know, no external signs. They all died off faster than I could even send them off to a and to get, text a and to get diagnosed. So I just assumed it was something that Vitata had, and I wrote an article about it, and I had, I got another start of uh, Perugii and put them in the system after they went through quarantine, and they were fine. Huh. So I think it was, you know, you start out with a half dozen fish. Mm -hmm. So if there's some, uh, yeah, you've lost a lot of variation already. Yeah. And that's like, we, we get fish from the wild. We're sampling the population. We're not getting yeah. all the... Uh, the variation that that right. species has. And then, uh, you know, somebody gets a couple dozen, they raise some fish, you get a trio from that, uh, you raise some, somebody gets a trio from you, yeah. you, know, you, you just narrowed the gene pool. And I, and so my theme was the, the population Peruvii I originally had uh, wasn't, had no resistance to whatever the Vitata brought in, yeah. but the second population did. They didn't like that because fish died. 
And I, I said, well... That's in the central part of the hobby. Yeah, yeah, that happens. And I think hobbyists need to know that even so-called experts like me yeah. have things happen. And See, that's, that's part of the whole, I want to show all of it, not just the best parts. Because then people go, oh, I don't feel so horrible that I lost some fish. Like, you know, I tell people like, oh, why are your fish look so good? Because I've killed more than you have. Yeah. I got to this point where I can keep them alive. But, uh, yeah, we, you know, we don't coddle the fish here, as you can tell. Uh, well, that's that's a distinction I made with my viewers. Like, a lot of times we get, let's say, guppies and stuff from overseas. They're raised on UV filtration, bare bottoms. Like, and they see a normal fish tank, and they just, you know, die of shock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we raise a few guppies, you know, feeder guppies, but also, uh, you know, some uh, red deltas. But I don't spend much time on them. Uh, uh, I've thought about getting some good ones and just trying them on the system. I mean, if, if you do, I've got some, like, I brought some back from the World Guppy Championships in Vienna that I absolutely love. There's a few other strains that, you know, they cost me 500 euros to get back. I've got them breeding, and the minute you want to play with something like that in the summer, I'll give you some. Okay, okay just play see, with what, see what happens to them, yeah. <laughs> I wanted just to bring it back to the States. It's so hard to get some of these yeah. high-end strains back into the States. Well, this is, uh, you can see all the shrimp in there. Yeah. Wow. That's Nahas grass, which yep. is, is a pain. I don't like it. The hornwort, at least. Uh, I never get it to ship well. That's why I don't sell it online. We, uh, I mean, we package it. We sell it uh, wholesale, uh, uh -huh. uh, a, a bag about like that for yep. five or six bucks to shops. Yep. Uh, and uh, what I don't like about it is by the time you see it, it's already filled the whole bag. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's where, what I like about it, too. Yeah, except for the, you know, I like the hornwort because if there's too much of it, if it's interfering with feeding, I can just come throw a bunch of it in a bucket, feed it to the chicken. Well, that's the problem I ran when I set up, after I saw your talk and I set up barrels, is that for a home hobby, it's not on a 75,000 gallon sump, you don't know how much is not being set at the bottom, and you couldn't really see. Now with GoPros and stuff, you could at least put a GoPro down there. But yeah. I, I would get like the, I get it going really well, then miss feed a couple of times. The water would sour because they were running on their own, just 55 gallons. They weren't yeah. being shared, so it was the, filtered down. Yeah, low. the the first system I did, I did it on a in an apartment uh -huh. in, in Austin, and I did a rack of 30 10 gallon aquariums. Okay. I had three tiers, 10 on on each tier uh, with the short edge out, yep. and I had leveling siphons. So I've pumped water from uh, mm -hmm. the end uh, one up to the top. It ran through siphons, down through a leveling siphon like to the middle siphons? one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, leveling siphons are neat little devices. Yes. And uh, uh, on the bottom, I had four or five tanks that I left lights on 24 hours a day uh, oh. with plants. Yeah. And uh, first I used uh, submerged plants. Then I thought... You know, pothos. Yes. Because you can, uh, it, it feeds heavily. We had it growing all the way around the store for a while. Yeah. And, yep. and uh, so I did that. That was the kind of prototype. Then I did some barrels uh, out in the yard and uh, in Austin when we lived there. And then when we built the greenhouse in Santa Fe, I went whole hog. Uh, there I, I did use a rotating biologic uh, collector. And like a rotary drum type of? Yeah, oh, wow. and I found that wasn't necessary. I was using... Uh, How long ago was that? That, that was pretty cutting edge. Yeah, that was in 97. That would have been real cutting edge. Well, like I, I, oh, and yeah. I got a big uh, commercial one for... Uh, wow. Uh, uh, but I found it wasn't necessary. We were using uh, water hyacinth, uh -huh. which is a great plant. Uh, we raised killies. Uh, uh, some of the fun little pan shacks. and what I would do is put a big crown in, in the middle of the vat, have all my oh. breeders in there, and it has those fibrous roots. They'd lay their eggs, and then about every uh, seven to ten days, I'd pick that up, move it to the next vat for the fry to hatch smart. out, and put another one in. Yeah. But the problem is they're illegal in Texas. All Despite, uh No, no, uh, uh, oh, water oh, hyacinth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, w which, that horse is already out of the barn. If you drive along the Texas coast, Every steam yeah. has. In fact, you go over Coletto Creek over here. There's in the lake. There's yeah. water highest, but they still the fine is 250 bucks a plant. So we don't do that, it. That eats up the profit of killifish pretty quick. Yeah. 
But we used it for rainbows too, the same way. Yeah. We, uh, uh, they'd lay their eggs on that. Let's see. Did you find that just like artificial spawning moths get too gunked up or something, or? What, what was that? The, the artificial like yarn spawning moths that don't work as well, or? I don't think so. Okay. We've got some down there because we still have one vat of rainbows. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ooh, what's six, in here? Something red. Uh, like sword tails? Probably. Let's see. Yeah. Young sword tails. Nice. Kind of a brick red. And they get away real quickly. Usually we would have three to four hundred fish in there. Right. Well, I've seen, uh, when I saw your talk, I've seen the pictures and... Yeah. Like, yeah, here's our breeder swords, which are okay. primarily liar tails and sail and uh, high fans. Uh, try, many, trying to build them back up. How many hours a day are you spending on the, the fish? We, well, basically uh, 10 hours. Uh, we come in early in the morning, this time of the year, usually Before around 7.30 yeah. and work till noon working fish. And then the rest of the day is trying to catch up on things like building doors right. and uh, putting on shade cloth. Okay. Uh, let's okay. see. I don't know. There just aren't very many. Those are some sunsets. Mm. The sunset very out of one of my absolute favorite fish. Yeah. That's... Um, High fin breeders in there. Nice. Yeah, I've got several lines of of uh, giant mollies going yes. right now. You're well, no well, and in the library nerd circle, you're well known yeah. for it. The real world doesn't know. We're gonna go down to that last vat on the okay. end over here. See if we make it before heat exhaustion sets in. Those are some short fin mollies. Wow, nice. See that male with the orange uh -huh. tail? It's got some Mexicana in him. It's our Venustus breeding colony. Wow. See their big male just yeah. went down there. Red zebras. Does it stay too hot outside for you to do um, good eats or do you do like Mika Splendor? We do. We use. We used yeah, to probably sweet. have 90% of the Mechas in the world. Oh, yeah. They got hit hard by this. We're okay. building them back up. We have tequila and Gadea gracilis, which Susie, I finally sold a pair. <laughs> so, That's the problem is, like, no one really wants to buy them, but they're amazing fish. Yeah. Uh, one of our plecos. Watch the fire ant now. Yeah, that guy is big. This is a batch of uh, OB cichlids getting ready to be harvested. Nice. Uh, tell you what, let me that's go down. That's a crazy spider. Oh that's yeah, water uh, spider. yeah. That's actually a wolf spider, but we have water spiders too. The huh. Diving spiders. We pack a pretty good bite. Let me go get a net. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll just take your word for it. Yeah. I have kind of one swoop at this before they figure out I'm yeah. doing something. Wow. Yeah, this is a hybrid group. You can see there, uh, that, that male, there's a young yeah. male that's going to be a sail fan, but there's that also that nice. Mexicana type. Uh, but yeah, there are some really big females in there, just hard to get to. Let's see if I can. Uh, no big ones in there, all the little ones. Some of those are going to be, be big. This is uh, Phosochromus that. There's some young Phosochromus. Wow. The big ones are 
Looks like I should dump that out while I'm here. And they both just raised up in the same vat. That's crazy. Yep. Let's see if I can do that. I keep more live bears sick with them than I do, but I gotta do it more. <laughs> Let's see if I can light up any big ones. I'm just happy to see that even you're sweating. It's not just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a nice male, but he's not a very big one yet. He's young, though. So he's just the body on those. Yeah, crazy. he's just sexing out. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, orange peacock, non-OB. Protomelis finistratus, really nice big fish. Watch your foot there. There's one of the breeder males uh -huh. who's threatening that other male. Some young OBs. Yeah. Yeah, we usually, when we're doing things on time, on schedule, we usually get three to four hundred wow. uh, per vat. We just did this one yesterday, and there's some big mollies in here, but let's see if I can. Nope. Thought I might be able to get some hiding up under that. That's the problem. Fish are smarter than we are. <laughs> yeah. That's a young female. Nope. Get some peacocks. Yeah, the sun, the sun gets on you. Yeah, we'll put shake cloth on this one pretty soon. Nah, I can't get a big one out of there. No worries. I can't believe you sell those. Like, they must sell instantly online, or people don't realize how good a quality they are. Uh, we haven't been selling online much other than off the website. Although, right. you know, we haven't pushed anything. I'm actually thinking about taking. I've got about half dozen really nice. Those are cull breeders, by the wow. way. That big. Okay. The, there are six big males in there. Yeah. I just culled for our breeding colony. I'm thinking about putting one on plus six females, related females on eBay and one on Aquabid just to see what happens. Uh, the one problem is the cost of shipping. Yes. Uh, so I think, and, and I hate shipping big pretty fish like that even overnight. I much prefer air cargo. Right. In my opinion, when I look at your fish online, in my opinion, they're very cheap. The shipping it's hard for people to get over, but the quality of fish and what I know is being done to the price is insane. If people knew that, I think they would, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let y'all do it for a while. I'm going to run up to the house. Yeah. Uh, you wanna, I'll have Jimmy take the microphone off. Okay. Way. I'm just going to run up and check on some things and then I'll 